a 10-win season for just the second time in program history for the NMSU Aggies. Back-to-back -back bowl games for the first time in 63 years and a Conference USA title game their first season in league play. Now, it takes a village to achieve a season like this, but without Diego Pavia, none of it would be possible. ABC 7's Rachel Phillips spoke exclusively with the NMSU quarterback. She filed this report. Boy, a little razzle-dazzle. Pavia keeps it, throws to the end zone. Pavia keeps it, tried to throw it, now gets rid of it. Touchdown, New Mexico State. Diego Pavia has become an enigma in college football. He's got a confidence about him that draws you in and makes you want to root for him. And the numbers he puts up make that even easier. 27 total touchdowns and nearly 3,200 all-purpose yards this season. And what he's achieving now, very few saw coming. Still on his feet! I want people to doubt me that if, you know, that's what I like, that's what I like, that's what makes me play better. And so I like when people tell me that I can't do something. The nose started when Diego was just five years old. He wanted to be like his brothers and play football, but he needed to be seven years old. One year later, his mum, Antoinette, gave in. She lied about my birth certificate and put me on an older team. That was Diego's first chance, and it was all he needed. Instantly, he fell in love with the game and that irreplaceable feeling. There's nothing like winning. I love winning. Um, I'll do anything to win. Betting on himself started with wrestling. Oh, yeah! A sport that at one point had him ranked number one in the country. That saw him win a state title and that got him a D1 partial scholarship to Northern Colorado. Something he wasn't getting from football. Diego turned down the wrestling scholarship and chose to, yep, bet on himself and his mum backed him all the way. She'll tell you right now, like, I, I got my money on my son. And Antoinette literally had her money on him, paying $407 when Diego joined the New Mexico Military Institute as a walk-on. I remember telling her, I was like, Mom, like, I appreciate you, like, you won't have to pay for anything after this. So far, so good. Nimi was Diego's backup, and yet in his first season, Diego started out being the backup to the backup. But by the end of the season, he had the starting spot on lock. And the next year, he led the program to a JUCO National Championship. Let's go, baby! Gary Kill and NMSU first looked at Diego in the semifinal game. Oh, I didn't, I mean, I went, this is a quarterback? You gotta be kidding me, you know? Small guy, doesn't look like a quarterback, all that kind of stuff. He's unique, and, uh, you know, that's, you know, recruiting him was a thing, you know, I, you, you just, you, you just didn't know. Kill partially offered Diego ahead of the natty but he'd already given the opposing quarterback a full ride. So I knew I had to outplay him. And Diego wasn't lying. He bowled out 176 total yards, two TDs in the air, plus another on the ground. A few days later, Kill called to offer him a full ride. What was that phone call like after you got the offer with her? Oh, I called my mom. I couldn't stop smiling. Like, I don't know if you can see it right now, but like, I, can't, I couldn't stop smiling. Um, you know, I went home, like, I was like, oh, mom, I'm the man, you know? I'm the man, mom. But, um... No, she was like, well, you got to go do it at that level now, too. And that next level came with its own set of challenges. The Aggies started the 2022 season 1-5, and five, and Diego was in and out of the starting lineup. The dream slipping away. I told myself, if they give me that job one more time, like, I'm not going to look back and I'm going to take off with it. More like blast off. Diego led the Aggies to five wins in the next six games, including a bowl game dub which saw him take home MVP honors, and now a historic season. All of it despite not looking like a typical quarterback. But you're taller? Yeah, yeah, you're taller. he is tall. Okay. Yeah. So, more no, than 5'10"? I'm about 5'10 and a half. I mean, when scouts talk to you out of high school and stuff, was that like a big concern for them, the height? Yeah, that's always a concern for everyone, and um, I think people should look past that. I think people should look past that uh, height, weight, um, and they should base it off film, you know? If they're a baller, they're a baller. How good does it feel right now to be doing what you're doing with this team and showing, yeah, you probably should have offered me? Yeah, I feel like that's why I got a chip on my shoulder every time I see, every time I step on the field. Like, okay, I emailed you, had, you had a chance, but we'll, we'll see where this game goes. One of those teams was Diego's hometown school in the University of New Mexico. During the season, video surfaced of what appears to be you urinating on the UNM practice field. When did that happen and why did you do that? So it happened before the year. Just a lot of a lot of animosity towards them. They told me I basically wasn't good enough. I wasn't gonna play. And when someone tells you that that's supposed to believe in you, it was just like 
like heart, like heartbreaking kind of. But at the end of the day, I shouldn't I shouldn't have done it. Um, obviously, it was a bad look. People thought uh, different of me. People could think what they want. I'm always had my swagger to me. I'm always still be me. Ten wins. Ten wins. And that was Rachel Phillips reporting. Now, Diego hopes to one day play in the NFL, but for right now, he's betting on himself and his team to once again put the nation on notice when they play in the Conference USA title game against number 20, Liberty, who bumped up two spots today in the, the polls.